smartphone has become a one-stop shop for all of our mobile computing needs, but there's a growing concern that certain aspects of the smartphone are starting to plateau. Now, we get this question a lot. If you're really into your music, doesn't it make more sense to invest in a standalone music player? Won't the quality be better than trying to do everything through our phones? We really wanted to answer that question for the music fans in our audience, but as we were producing this video, news came down about a certain manufacturer who was walking away from the dedicated music player market. And in the past, we've used Fio. They're a manufacturer of high quality audio hardware. This is a little USB DAC that we've uh, used in previous reviews to talk about smartphone audio. And because they do make other products, we are able to shift gears and talk about this beauty in red. This is the third generation Fio X5. It's a sexy little brick of a gadget chock full of DACs and amps and ports and dials and buttons, everything that you might need to pump your high quality audio files while on the go. If the hypothesis is music players do a better job than phones, shouldn't we test this little player against the strongest phone competitor we have? Yes, Juan, yes we should. And of course, that means the LG V20. I've praised this phone in a bunch of videos on podcasts. This is the highest quality headphone experience you can get in a phone today. So this is the showdown. Uh, test those claims. See if I actually know what I'm talking about when I'm recommending audio gear. Jumping right in with the hardware, there's definitely something I miss from that classic age of iPods and Zooms. I love the design in red, but again, just like with phones, I can't say I'm a huge fan of the glass back. And again, for shooting this video, I've got to wipe it down every single time I touch it. This is recalling that golden age of mobile digital audio, and I kind of dig it. And I really like the controls, the buttons, the clicky tactile feel, uh, the jog dial to control the volume. Again, it's a nice, charming throwback to how we used to control audio. You never have to really look at the screen, play, pause, skip, next track. A lot of these things have been moved over to the headphones. The little microphone unit usually has some buttons on there. You can answer calls, do all that fun stuff too. But especially when you're dealing with nicer headphones, they won't always come with that remote. Control is super important, but looking at the software side of that, that's where a modern smartphone is absolutely going to excel. The V20 is plenty powerful, and I do like the way that the LG Music app is laid out. I think it's a nice, pretty app for music. The Fio is an Android media player, but it's running an older version of the Android OS. It's running Android 5. It can do pretty much anything another Android device can do, but there's not as much point getting cranky about like web browser scrolling performance. The main focus is audio, and they're also assuming you're not not really going to be looking at the screen as much as you are listening to your music. Still, it would be nice if it were a little prettier. The Fio starts you off at 32 gigabytes of storage, which is really more like 24 to 26 after formatting and partitioning, but it does come with dual memory card slots if you really want to max out your storage. Powering nicer audio hardware with higher quality audio files drains more battery than you might think. Both of these should be good for around 10 hours of audio only playback, but of course, you're probably using your phone for more than just listening to music. Happily, though this is a standalone media player, it does have Wi-Fi on board. You can connect to Spotify, Pandora, Google Play Music, and especially for those services that support offline listening. And the Bluetooth on board supports aptX, so if you have headphones that support that codec, then you will have also a higher quality wireless experience when listening. That's all well and good. We got all the gadgety stuff out of the way, but what really matters is the audio quality. Bumping the biggest audio files I've got uh, lossless files, FLAC files, these two are fairly evenly matched. Anecdotally, to my ear, I think the V20 is a little more even throughout the EQ spectrum, and I do think this phone bumps the bass just a little more aggressively. But I really like what the Fio is doing in the mids. The bass isn't as aggressive, you've got a little bit more room for instruments and for the human voice to shine through. And I think you get a, a fuller and wider stereo soundscape when listening on the Fio. Looking at the charts, both of these gadgets are closing in on the limits of my home recording equipment. So quality of output, you'll be well served by either. Now quality is one thing, but what we also care about is the amp output. It's that headphone volume. That's the area where the V20 absolutely shines, decimates all of the rest of the flagship phone competition. Pulling up another chart. I mean, this is the V20 up against a Galaxy S8 Plus. Just no competition there. The V20 is just stomping all over what the Galaxy can do. I think we'd be hard pressed to find a portable player that can really, well, well, damn. This VO gets big, it gets fat, and it gets loud. 
A comfortable listening volume for me is somewhere between 50 and 60% of the player's total output. Don't worry like you're not getting what you pay for. Actually not driving this thing to its maximum all the time also helps reduce the amount of noise that the player will add to your music. And this is a big deal even if you're only bumping MP3s. You might not have the ear for all the AV geekery and the higher quality audio files, not know what you're listening for, but you can literally feel when your headphones are not being properly driven. But I've rambled on enough, let's wrap this up. Uh, V20 versus Fio X5, should you be using a dedicated music player for your audio? If you're using a phone like the V10, the V20, the LG G6 with the quad DAC or the Axon 7, this probably isn't gonna be a huge jump for you. But any other phone currently available at the time this video was shot, the X5 absolutely crushes. It's not even close. So $400, this is right up my alley. This is exactly the kind of companion device I love taking with me, and it does. It's got that old school charm for being that lump, that brick in my pocket that I know I can count on. I really dig what Fio has done here, but this is just another data point to reinforce how consistently impressed I've been by the LG V20. Comparisons like these show us how much further we can go with audio and how a lot of our other phones out there are really just good enough. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for more comparisons and showdowns like these and help us out with a share on your favorite social network. For Pocket Now, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, some gadget guy on Twitter and Instagram, and I will catch you all on the next video.